Hey there! In this video we are going to show you how to play Saltai. A special thanks to Pythagoras Games for providing us this preview copy. All the rules are final, only the components may have minor differences when compared to a production copy. In Saltai, each player is the leader of a tribe of Celts, gathering resources, expanding citadels and improving their army to battle against the invading Romans. The game is played over an undefined number of rounds, where the players are going to perform actions until the last progress marker is removed from the board. Each turn is divided into three phases, moving the action marker to determine the possible actions this turn, swapping a worker to modify your workforce and boost your action, and performing one action from the adjacent to the action marker. You can perform one of four different actions. Farm allows you to gather cards from the markets. Build allows you to expand and complete citadels. Battle allows you to fight against Romans and to improve your garrison. Or recruit that allows you to hire workers and train them as powerful druids. Each time the action marker crosses the river from north to south, you trigger progress and the marker is placed into a progress card that provides victory points at the end of the game. As soon as the last progress marker is removed, the end of the game is triggered, ending the current round and playing a final round where each player performs two consecutive actions. Then, you proceed to the final scoring and the player with the most victory points is the winner. You always start your turn by moving the action marker clockwise to determine the actions you can choose from in the current turn. You must move the action marker from 1 to 3 spaces, but there is one aspect to consider. When moving only one space, you gain one strength point, increasing it on your player board. When moving 3 spaces, you spend 3 strength points, decreasing them on your track, and when moving to spaces, you do not gain or spend any strength points. Optionally, you can modify your workforce. After moving the action marker, you can choose one of your three active workers to exchange with one of those on the space where you are going to perform your action. We are going to explain the actions in a second, but you should know that if your active workers match the type of action you are going to perform, that can enable you to boost your action. You always end your turn by performing one of the four possible actions, as long as the action is adjacent to the action marker. You are going to perform the action either on the north region or on the south region, and you can encounter spaces where two different actions are available. When choosing to farm, you are able to gather cards from the market of the region you are in, being either on the north or on the south. First, you always take the leftmost card on the market to your hand, being free to take. Then, depending on your total number of farmers, you can take more cards, considering the requirements for each card. You should note that even though you don't spend your workers to gather cards, you can only use each worker to fulfill the requirement from one single card, as if it was a cost. When choosing to build, you are able to expand one of the citadels of the region you are in. Each disc has a cost in cards that you have to discard from your hand, matching the color of the citadel where you want to build. Depending on the total number of builders you have in your tribe and as active workers, you discard one less card for each builder. However, you always have a minimum cost of one card to determine the color of the citadel where you are going to build. After paying that cost, you build your leftmost disc on the citadel and gain the indicated bonus. In addition, in case your disc completed the citadel, you take the bonus tile to your player area and flip it with reverse side, depicting one victory point for the end of the game. As depicted, each player will now gain one point by the end of the game for each of their discs among all completed citadels. When choosing to recruit, you are able to hire new workers to your tribe. First, you immediately recruit one of the three workers on your active pool directly into your tribe. Then, you can recruit one extra worker for
for each novel you have until a maximum of two. Optionally, you can decide to send workers from your tribe into the druid order of the region you are in to train one of them as a druid. To do so, send from your tribe to the bag the depicted workers on the topmost druid tile and receive one druid from the board to place into your tribe. A druid is a powerful worker that can serve as a farmer, a builder or a soldier to boost your farm, build or battle actions. However, for each druid on your tribe, including the one you just hired, you have to discard one card from your hand. Afterwards, refill your pool of active workers back to a maximum of three, one at a time from those available on the center of the board. Then, you take that root tile to your player area and flip it to its reverse side, depicting one or two victory points for the end of the game. Finally, when you take the last root tile, you place this progress marker into any progress card of your choice, considering you are valuing it for the final scoring of all players. When choosing to battle, you are able to fight against the invading Romans of the region you are in, depending on the strength of your army. Optionally, before trying to defeat that Roman army, you can discard cards from your hand with the same military icon and convert them into strength points. Each card is going to provide you one point for each soldier you have until a maximum of four strength points per card. In case you have the necessary strength on your player board to defeat the topmost Roman army, you decrease the indicated strength and take that army tile to your player area. Then, you flip it to its reverse side, depicting one or two victory points for the end of the game. In case you successfully defeat the Roman army, you can place your topmost garrison cube into that area, discarding a card from your hand, matching one of the available military icons. In addition, when you defeat the last army, you place this progress marker into any progress card of your choice, considering you are valuing it for the final scoring of all players. As depicted, the player with majority on the garrison areas of the north and south will gain one point for each of their garrison cubes in that area. When performing your turn, you can make the action marker cross the river from north to south, triggering progress. The player with Teotati style is going to place the topmost progress marker into a progress card at their choice, then passing the Teotati style to the player on their left. When you place a progress marker into a progress card, you are choosing it to score by the end of the game. And, for each progress marker on a card, it is worth one victory point. At the end of the game, each progress card scores to all players that fulfill its requirement. There is an important aspect you need to consider. You start the game with your leader depicting a goal that provides you victory points in case you fulfill it by the end of the game. When there are three progress markers left on the track, you can flip your leader to the heroic side, upgrading your goal. However, in case you decide to upgrade your goal, you cannot go back to the previous one. As soon as the last progress marker is removed from the progress track, the end of the game is triggered and the Teutati style is passed to the player on the left. The remaining players in the current round, before all players perform their last round of the game, with two consecutive actions per player. At the end of the game, you will score victory points for your discs on completed citadels, bonus tiles, druid tiles and roman tiles you gathered, majority on garrison cubes, unlocked spaces on your player board with victory points depicted, remaining strength and remaining cards, progress cards with their condition fulfilled, and your leader in case you fulfill their goal. Then, the player with the most victory points is the winner. And that is all you need to know to play Seltai. On the rulebook, you can also find the rules for the solo mode. If you enjoyed learning this game with us, don't forget your thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Until then, stay connected and be safe. See you soon!